Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on safety requirement specification, step by step SRS process. This is part 2. This is video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. Just we will understand about the basic references for developing the SRS. International Electrotechnical Commission, Electrotechnical Commission, International Electrotechnical Commission IEC, ANSI and ISA. These are the different standards agency who are designing the role of the safety requirement specifications. IEC 61508, this is one standard. It is for the requirements for manufacture of CIS components, valves, and its sensors, etc. So, this is basically for the manufacturers who are producing the CIS related uh, components like valve sensors, etc., as well as logic solvers. Okay, IEC 61511, this is a safety instrumented system for the process industry sector. This is another standard. And ANSI slash IEC S84, this is an alternate standard for IEC, which is equivalent to IEC 61511 being adapted in Americas. In the earlier presentation slide, we saw about the first six steps of the SRS process. In this uh, presentation, we will see the next six steps. Step number seven is for proper operating procedures and relevant training models need to be established to ensure that the SIS shall be operated and maintained properly. This is the step. Eight, plant instrumentation automation engineer to review the software application requirements for the proposed SIS loops. The automation engineer has to review the software application software with respect to all safety instrumented system loops. Step number nine, the components of the SIS loops are to be field tested as part of project commissioning. Operation personnel in charge of the project is to take the responsibility for the coordinating different plan functions to complete SIS loop checks. Each instrument before it is going to be put in service in line that has to be verified for the perfect cabling without any earthing or any other fault as and confirm the sensor which is going to sensor process parameter reading from the sensor reaches to the control system and then to the operators in the HMI panel. So this is known as a loop check. So for each of the instrument not only in the safety instrumented system loop as well as in the normal basic process control system loop that has to be ensured and this is a part of the project commissioning activity. Okay, in step number 10, the SIS application software must be simulated to prove it is functional functionality to prove its functionality before being installed in a running plant. Instrumentation automation engineer shall ensure the same and complete documenting the simulation test results. The application software has to be simulated. There is a tool the application software program or uh, there will be an having an identical tool using which the real process condition can be simulated and tested the logic can be tested whether it achieves the desired intent this is done by instrumentation and automation engineers responsible for the respective plant step number 11 sys coach shall conduct sys assessment against specification by code review prior to initial operations there will be a safety instrumented system coach or we can be named in a different designation for different industry. They have to review the SIS assessment. They have to do the SIS assessment and review and approve the SRS before commissioning. In step number 12, the SIS loop is to be validated in the plant installation including process equipment to demonstrate that it meets all respects the required safety functionality. So, in the step number 12, the loop has to be validated. Because we are going, uh, supposing particular uh, safety instrumented system loop is uh, doing a level measurement on a process vessel. Whenever the level in the vessel goes above 80%, the respective safety instrumented system wall, which is admitting the process fluid into the tank, has to be closed. So, this is one complete cycle. The sensor sensing the high level, giving a signal to the logic solver, and logic solver is uh, doing the mathematical logical functions internally and giving a command back to the valve to close it. So this steps together known as a cycle. So and this has to be ensured. How to do that? So either the tank has to be filled with the the equivalent fluid. If it is an hydrocarbon, maybe not may not be possible. So they need put with an equivalent fluid or water or something. So, and then raise the level and see it reaches 80 percent level and at 80 percent level the sensor gives an indication along to the logic solver so logic solver do the internal arithmetic 
and then sends the signal back to the valve to close it. This complete uh, testing is known as validation. It has to be done for respective individual loops. The, these are the 12 steps to be followed during the safety requirement uh, specifications and uh, we will go over the some development guidelines. The SIS requirements shall be expressed and structured in such a way that they are clear, precise, verifiable, maintainable and feasible written to aid comprehension and interpretation by those who will utilize the information at any phase of the life cycle. So, that has to be very clear and precise so that the users and uh, engineers who are going to do it on a regular maintenance has to understand and uh, apply it during the entire plant life cycle. So make sure that SRS identifies the critical owner requirements for design and installation standards and provisions required for robustness and maintainability. Where possible, state design and installation requirements in a separate site design requirements and practice document cited for inclusion as minimum design requirements by the SRS. So, the design and installation standard requirements has to be updated and that has to be uh, reviewed. Uh, include the basics for set points even if it is a, if this basis is a comfortable operating margin above or below a limit. If the set point is based on equipment limits that uh, does not exceed value, make sure that it is clearly identified. Do not include detailed engineering design data in SRS. Do not revise SRS multiple times unless there is a real change that affects the required functions and performance of the SIS or its safety instrumented function SIFs or related functions. Ideally, a SRS would only go through three times or maximum four revisions as it is developed. So, this is the maximum allowable. So, we should not uh, for every small change the designer, design engineer or uh, plant safety expert, they should not go and uh, keep on updating the document so that the continuity will be lost. So, there shall be minimum revisions before finalizing the complete documentation. We are uh, having multiple steps and uh, guidelines to develop SRS and what we are going to gain out of it. So, this is the value of data driven SRS. Better method of doing SRS is to use a data driven SRS. In a data driven SRS, personnel who are knowledgeable and experienced with the SRS preparation define the complete requirements for a SRS contents. A project that is generating the SRS then uses the database to enter the required data and generate SRS report. The SRS is complete with a well designed database that has all the fields filled out with the quality data. See, basically, this is a basic design data and applicable for the safety instrumented system. So, it has to have a complete precise information which shall give a clear cut picture for the people who are going to use it. It may not be the same person who was designed, who was involved in the design, may be continuing in the same plant or same job. He may be leaving the organizations and a newcomer may join. So, whoever is going to do the regular activity during the entire life cycle has to have a clear cut picture. That's why the data driven SRS means all the data are there in electronically available so that any person who is having a background knowledge of the safety requirement system and a safety instrumented system can understand and work on it. PFDs of common designs can be automatically computed from failure parameters entered for SIF inputs and outputs. That means probability of failure on demand can be automatically computed from any failure that is happening. Okay. It is then easy to maintain or identify where gaps exist. Use of data driven SRS has the following benefits to owner, operator, organizations and project teams. What it will do, it will drastically reduce the cost for SRS development and management because there need not be a big team doing the SRS development and the design. They can comprise of smaller teams and complete the activity. A well designed SRS data structure with reasonable examples reduces SRS development times to hours rather than weeks or months. Personal knowledge in SRS requirements and preparation of SRS contents, layouts and format define a standard that becomes a standard for the organization. Actually, the people who are working on it, they should have a good adequate thorough knowledge so that the development and the different inputs required can be made easily for the people who are going to use it and the maintenance teams. SRS consistency and completeness can be assured and missing information can be readily identified. 
Sarah's data for sys and sifs can be copied from other sys and sifs in the database. Engineers edit for differences instead of creating from scratch because once the database is available and uh, the next, uh, next sif is similar to the previous one, they can just uh, copy and paste and keep on editing it. Otherwise, it will take much time for them to read from the scratch. SRS data has a single point of source and access. The latest versions are always available with the changes readily tracked. So, tracking should be made available so that any changes has to be updated. Saras data is available to other steps of the safety life cycle. Saras data can be used to generate, generate specification data for physical devices or link to the group of scenarios upon which the safety functions are based. So, they can generate a specification data for the physical devices or link to group of scenarios upon the safety functions are based. Thank you.